meantime, we got a bunch of graduates today. <laughs> Messiel. In other words, Mike. Where you at? This is a very this is a very special day for him because he's getting married today. <laughs> Kevin. Is Kevin here? Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Renita. Elizabeth. Are you Elizabeth? I thought you was Beth. Just fat old Beth. Sheena. Andre. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Michael, that's all how I know you. How was it? By the way, just his brother, JC. Man, I think he went and tore up, beat up, scrounged up, did everything he could to get him to come here. Is that true? Yes, he did. So how was it? It was awesome. Here, take this thing. Yeah, it was great. Uh, I got to thank my brother. Um, come here, JC. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, um, when he used to come over and my brother and I were just in our muck and you know, pr try to preach to us and, you know, and we'll just, you know, you know, we, we just won't listen and, and I don't know, he, he just, I don't, know, I don't have much words. He wouldn't words give up? He wouldn't give up, no. And so here you are. Yes. And this is a special day? It's a special day, yes. Is your bride here today? No, you know how women are getting ready. Yeah, ready, getting ready. <laughs> <laughs> JC, will you go ahead? And Absolutely. Love you, man. Boy, that was short and sweet. What are you gonna do now? Second face. All right. Well, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Kevin. How was it? That was pretty good, Pastor Walt. Praise God. So what's something you learned or what, what effect did this thing have on you for the last six months? Well, Pastor Wall, to be honest with you, before I came here, um, I had some problems. I, you know, I've been an undercover um, tweaker for like 15 years, <laughs> you know, using uh, crystal meth. Hey, there's some undercover tweakers here, too. <laughs> you, can't, you can't undercover too much, though. Using crystal meth, I don't know how I got involved in that stuff, but uh, and uh, you know, I was um, it never been a problem until like um, three years ago when one of my girlfriends left me while I was in jail. Then it became a problem for me, so I started to take a look at myself, you know, because I used to be in these motel rooms using drugs, not eating, and um, killing my liver and dehydrating and stuff, talking to myself, you know, looking in the mirror, telling my man, I'm starving. I should go across the street and Denny's, give me some chicken noodle soup. Chicken noodle soup with the soda on the side. Looking crazy, saying stupid stuff. And so, and so I used to do crazy stuff like that, man. But I told you, you know, I've always been selfish all my life because I got a lot of stuff, right? I never really talked to my family because I was too busy for them. I didn't call my daughter. So I finally called my daughter yesterday, Pastor. I want to guess what she said to me. She said, now I might cry, I don't know. But she said, because I don't express my feelings, she said that, uh, she said, Dad, I've been dreaming about you. Aww. I had two dreams. I had the same dream last night. Wow. And she said, I dreamed that you bought a fixer-upper house and that 
So I'm thinking I'm getting me a house. I'm like, God still blessing me again. Wow, this is crazy. I said, like, come on with the story. And she's like, you know, when we got to the house, it was time for us to get the house. There was a bunch of dead cats in the house. And she said, the man next door had a horse. And she said, when we stepped on the property, the horse slipped open the latch and, and, and ran, ran away. And she said, I knew the cats was dying because one was in the middle of the floor, was licking itself, licking the balls of hair off of them. She said, but when we got in the house, I went to the house and jumped on the counter and started praising God for a refrigerator. Hold on. <laughs> started praising God for the refrigerator and praising him for, thank God, you know, most houses don't come with a refrigerator, thanking God that it has a microwave and stuff like that. And she said, after I got through praising, I went outside, and I seen a man. A man came up to us and started, you know, telling us, yeah, you guys got a good deal. You know, this guy next door got a business. You guys do good. All you need to do is open up a business. And so she didn't pay too much attention, so she said they cleaned up the house, and when they left, the guy came back, and they kind of ignored her. And she said, um, oh, yeah. she said, here's a dream. She said, she disappointed. She said, a house was you. And she said, God used animals in the Bible. And she said, a dying cat was... God was letting you know that all evil things are, die, are dead. Aww. And dead are dying from your body. And when you have the power, when you step on the property, the devil flees you. That was the horse. It flees you. Aww, okay. And she said, um, she said, but you still got some of your old, your old ways. You still want to make money. Some way, she said, you're still holding on to that. You need to let that go, and, and you'll be all right. God will work with you. Yeah. When's the last time you talked to your daughter before that? Oh, it's been... It's been like eight months, nine months. You know, I just, I really don't call because, um, you know, her mother used her against me when we was little, so I kind of, kind of made me mad, and I just, you know, don't call. But I'm, Amen. You know, I'm, re I'm releasing that. So, you know, thank God, thank God for Church on the Street, thank God for Pastor Lewine, and thank God for um, um, Pastor Walt and, and Chance to restore our lives. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a good praise, Alvin. Well, by the way. With honors. What are you going to do now? Oh, you know what? Pastor Walter, I'm kind of stuck. i got to stay here if I want to still keep going. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. <laughs> Young lady. Now, how was it? Looking at the final part of it, now I can smile. <laughs> what about the first part? This, whatever. Well, thi this part, um, incredibly intense for me. But it, that's, you know what, God makes, a, he wires us all differently. And you know what, working through it all, God is so faithful. He is so faithful. And um, is it easy? No. <laughs> Do you like it? I love it. I love it. I love it. God is, he's got me here for a reason. Figuring out is not is not easy, but that's where coming, that's where seeking him is the most rewarding part, is finding that out. You know, I, I watch you. In fact, we, we met Renita down at Cass, St. Vincent de Paul, mm -hmm. and she'd been down a while, and uh, she came, okay. and she's been here struggling. She kind of wanted to leave a few times, but God's got his hand on her. She likes outreaches. It seems like she cares about other people, and there's many times she's gone back down to Cat to St. Vincent Paul with us during the services and truly, truly ministers. She's got, she's sharp and she's got a lot of stuff going for her but the enemy wants to rip her off and get her out of here. So, you know, that's the same way with all of us. The battle's raging. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What is it? And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And um, if, it, if it were not for Jesus, mm. how many of us can say that? If it Amen. were not for Jesus. All of us. Amen. It's honest with ourselves. What are you going to do now? I'm in second phase. <laughs> By the way, graduate with honors. Bless you. I love you, Pastor Walt. God bless you. <laughs> She's about as feminine as they come. Uh, Beth. Excuse me. Elizabeth. How was it? Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. There ain't no glass. 
Um, I just want to say from the first time I, I stepped on property when I was in walk-ins and I was homeless and pregnant, and my divine intervention from God to bring me here and to place me on the fourth floor and have my baby here and just to just go that route, to know that he was pulling on my heart to come be a disciple. And he saved me from a lot of mess that I could have been in right now for the fact that I'm dealing with a lot of pain and a lot of suffering and a lot of grieving and a lot of um, real hard things in life that are changing and shifting. I'm just grateful that my eyes and my heart are open, that I can see the correction, that I, um, I see what he's trying to work out in me and I wanted enough to stay here I wanted it enough to um, to just keep pushing through no matter how sad I feel, no matter how tough things get. I know I'm an example for a lot of the girls and um, for, for Jesus himself, I know that um, I'm trying to walk in a Christ-like way. She's doing a good job too. You know what's so neat is to just see how God progresses us. If we'll let him. By the way, he don't take the ornaments out of us. He just kind of tempers a little bit and gives us that courage to press on using the same tenacity or whatever you, it is, how, you know, the name you want to put on it. And that's what I see. She just. Now, I'm an old man. Why on earth do you wear glasses and ain't got no glass in them? Because I look good. <laughs> Leave that one alone. She does, too. She's cute. What's honors? Gina, how was it? I'm good. God is good. You love the Lord, don't you? Oh yes. Well, you're a. Yes. Yes. You're a fighter, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Praise God. I love to serve all the ladies, the homies, Amanda, CG. Oh, you're going too. Deborah, you're mean, going too far now. Everybody knows, but most of all for God. God's thinking the whole of me and just I'm not gonna give up. Hey, why don't you run over there and start kicking people, running around, <laughs> touching them and, and letting the fire get on some of those guys over there. And some of the rest of us over here. You know, she's that's amazing. She just got some fire in her. She's got some she's got some neat things going with her for her. You can just see it in her. Native? Yes, but first of all, a child of God. <laughs> Which uh, tribe? Uh, Apache, White Mountain Apache. They're the mean ones, by the way. <laughs> What's God put in your heart to do? To continue on this journey that he's allowed me to begin because of his grace and for his resurrection on the cross. And just to move forward, because I have a nine-year-old back home. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to come here, but he's here with me. I know he is. He's proud of his mom. So that, that's what really gets me up in the morning, too. God, first of all, just reminds me to get up in the morning, breathe in and out, you know, and just to serve and to love and just to be. I've come to the end of myself, Pastor Walt, and it's all for God's glory right now and for his kingdom. Okay, what do you do right now? Right now, I'm going to second phase. <laughs> Has God put any desire in you to go back to the reservation and evangelize, share? Yes, eventually, yes. M the more and more I allow him to just to be God in my life and to equip me more and more and just that to be ready, you know, for battle, to be up there in the front lines for my people, for my son, for generations to come. Look out. Do you have a sharp tomahawk? <laughs> and a bow and arrow. <laughs> yes. You're going to go get him. Mm, yes. With a gospel. In the name of Jesus, yes. The word of God is, is sharp like a tomahawk. Mm. <laughs> With honors. God bless you. Andre, how was it? Uh, it was good. Um, uh, it was fun, actually. It was pretty fun. Um, out of the reservation, this is a very experience. This is my first time experiencing everything, seeing everyone jumping up and down, seeing praising God. I wasn't really into everything, but then being here for six months, reading the Bible, and then got in trouble, being on ice, it drew me more closer into God. So shout out to ice people. <laughs> it gets you, it gets you to God real close. And then Pastor Walt, what you said at the, at the first month, why are you here? 
Proverbs chapter 12, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. What? What? It's stupid. Which way you want to aim? At everyone, I guess. <laughs> what tribe are you from? Uh, I'm from the White Mountain Apache tribe. And I would like, a, uh, I don't know how this goes, but it goes out there. She, Andre Lee Velasquez going there. I mean, that's a little I know, so yeah. <laughs> Spanish. Uh, Spanish, only know is hola and como estas. <laughs> Tengo hambre. I am hungry. <laughs> so what, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to go to my res for one for a face break if Pastor Kent will allow it. All right, he said yes. Uh, but <laughs> I'm gonna be going. Ba I'm coming. Go back to my reservation for a week, and I'll come back. And I already got my yellow badge, so I'm phase two. Praise the Lord. <laughs> With honors. God bless you. Praise the Lord.